from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people of all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and you want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is Animals. This is segment one of episode 39. Our last episode focused on pets. I think of my own earliest experience with America's most popular pets, cats and dogs. Now I have the memory of when I was very young and my little sister and I were walking on the sidewalk on our block and that's where we saw this young gray and black cat that came up to us and started following us. We brought the cat home and asked my mom if, she, if we could keep it. Well, she said we'd have to wait till my dad got home from work. So when we asked about keeping the cat, later our dad had a few wise things to say. He told us that this cat would need for us to feed it and give it water, not just today, but for many years. Now he asked if we promised to do this, and of course we said we would. He repeated that we'd need to feed the cat even when we didn't feel like it. Now, I didn't think he would say yes, but that is what he said after we promised to be good pet owners. We called this cat Darling, and it wasn't long before Darling had kittens. This riveted our attention. While Darling was an outside cat like most of our neighborhood, she was provided with a soft nest inside a wooden crate inside the house and we watched in awe as she gave birth to three tiny kittens. We got to see them nurse, and we got to see Darling gently groom them and purr for them. It was some time after that that Darling got spayed, fixed with an operation, so she couldn't have more kittens. Now, we had given away all but one kitten, and when Darling came back from the vet wearing a bandage, she was again provided a nest in the house, and now it was the kitten who took gentle care of her mom. Now, there were also dogs in my life, although my immediate family never had one as part of uh, my pets. My uncle had surprised my grandmother with a half-grown puppy for Christmas one year. My earliest memory of this dog, named Corky, was that Christmas morning. And while she surely kept my grandmother company, this dog also became my faithful companion. I was not a kind of kid who could sit still, so while other family members sat and talked, Corky and I would run around together on the farm. My uncle would have had uh, many other dogs over the years. In fact, he did. People packed off unwanted dogs to the country, and some of them found their way to my uncle's farm. Those who were friendly usually got to stay. And whenever I went walking around the farm, there seemed to always be a dog tagging along. I've raced, chased, and been chased playfully by dogs on that farm. And when I look back on my childhood, I can't imagine what it would have been like to grow up without pets. Our cat in town and the dogs in the country were my constant companions. I didn't always appreciate them at the time, but I'm sure my life would have been very different without them. So I had the benefit of having both cats and dogs as pets. Not, now, not everyone likes both of these pets. My dad, for example, was a cat person. He really had no desire to have a dog as a pet. And I've met people who love dogs but dislike cats. Now, while I love both cats and dogs, and while they're both popular pets, there are fundamental differences between the two. This creates a great opportunity for us to ramp up the English, the function of comparing and contrasting these well-known animals. First, let's look at what's true about both cats and dogs. 
Both pets are mammals. This means that cats and dogs both have fur. They're warm-blooded, meaning that their bodies produce their own heat. They give milk to their young who have live birth. True for cats and dogs. Dogs and cats share their position as the most popular pets. They also have sharp teeth and they make vocalizations. Now we can use a Venn diagram to reflect this knowledge. At this point, we're only establishing what's true about both cats and dogs. So we have an overlapping section on the chart, the green section titled both. Now we added mammals because they're both mammals. Now we add that they're both popular pets. We also add that they have sharp teeth. Hopefully you've never been bitten by your pet. Now we add in the green overlapping section that they make vocalization, certain sounds or noises. Now we're concerned with characteristics that are unique to cats compared to things that are true about dogs. Now cats can pull their claws into their feet, removing them from sight. This is called retractable claws. Cats are usually independent, needing less of their owner's attention than dogs. The kind of teeth possessed by cats are very pointed and sharp. These teeth are known as feline teeth. The vocalizations of cats are also unique. They say meow and they purr and some even trill. These vocalizations help their kittens find them and they have a calming effect. Now we can use one side of the Venn diagram to list the characteristics of cats, starting with their retractable claws. Notice the label cats on the yellow side of the chart. We add the details of their vocalizations, meow, purr, and trill. Now we add the cat's well-known independence. We won't forget the teeth either. They mark a noticeable difference between cats and dogs. Now, now that we have the cat side of the chart filled out, let's consider dogs, especially as they relate to the unique characteristics of cats. Unlike cats, the claws of a dog's feet don't retract. Since they have contact with the ground as a dog walks and runs, a dog's claws are usually not as sharp as a cat's claws. Now, we don't hear a dog meowing or purring. Instead, they bark, growl, or groan. Most dogs are more dependent on their owners than cats. While they both depend on their owners for food and water and medical attention, most dogs need more personal attention from their owners. And finally, dogs have canine teeth. They are pointed and sharp, but they are different from the teeth of a cat. Now we use the other side of the chart, the blue side, to list the unique characteristics of dogs. We start with their non-retracting claws. We add their vocalizations, barking, growling, and groaning. We include the part about the dogs being more dependent. And we add the type of teeth they have. Now our chart is complete and we're ready to write some sentences. Now here's where we learn today's objectives of using contractions, excuse me, conjunctions to compare and contrast two objects. Let's start in the middle. Look at the title of the green section. The word both is very important to comparing. In an academic sense, comparing is showing how two objects are alike. Let's read the chart. Mammals, popular pets, sharp teeth, and vocalizations. Any of these can be used in the comparison. Now this marks the end of segment one of episode 39. We'll start building those sentences in segment two.